Why hello there, welcome back to another video, and in today's video we are going to be checking out how to make some awesome sliding doors you can add into your very own Roblox game. Without any more stalling, let's get started. Alright, so I'm just going to throw up a quick time lapse of my door build, I'll cut back when we start our scripting, and I'll explain a few things about the door that you do really need to know. So while you're watching the time lapse, I'd quickly like to mention that I have been sick all week, and I see I'm still currently somewhat sick, uh, that's why my voice is very uh, croaky. But yeah, I'll let you guys what it, guess what it is that I've been uh, sick with. But other than that, uh, yeah, if you have any questions, obviously leave a comment down below. If you're enjoying the video, thumbs up and all that good stuff. If you're not, thumbs down, up to you. But uh, yeah, that's all from me right now. Enjoy the rest of the video. Alright, so after that time lapse, we should have our main door frame. You will uh, be a, well, you will have your personal one ready or made. All right. So this is basically just two models. So the first model is containing uh, obviously everything. And then within that, we've got the door frame. Okay. Let me just move that to show you it. This is our door frame. Obviously, let me move that back. And inside our door frame, we have our main door frame pieces. Don't, as long as they're anchored, don't worry about them. And here, we have door piece 1 position and door piece 2 position, okay? So these here, alright, let me pull them out. These here are being used as C-frame references, alright? So we know where to move the part to in the script, okay? Because the script needs a position to move the parts when the door is opened. Because otherwise, it isn't going to know where to put them. So let's move those back. And... Now, if we close up our door frame model, alright, so we should have about five pieces in there for my model. And forget about these welds, don't worry about those. In our main door model, we will just have two main door pieces, alright, named door piece one and two. There you go, door piece one and two. And these are just pretty standard block doors. I've just made them nice and simple for the sake of the video so it's easy to understand. Next, we have our door frame, okay, and now we need to add uh, a trigger, like a like a prompt or like a, like a door handle, alright? So if you wanted to do, be a bit more advanced and add in like a proper door handle model and all that stuff, then sure, by all means, do that. But for the sake of this video, I'm just going to keep it nice and simple and use a proximity prompt, which will be connected to an invisible part. Alright, so let me come down here to our main door, and let's just add in a part, and this part I've just preset to be green, okay, so it's, it's sometimes for C-frame model parts, we just have them like green, it's just like a developer thing, don't ask me why, uh, <laughs> and we're just going to scale that, just in them nice and small. So this is going to be what anchors our, uh, this is going to anchor our proximity prompt, alright, so let's just rename this uh, part uh, keyhole, just for the sake of uh, being able to find things. And in properties, let's just quickly make that can collide false and anchor true, if you haven't already, just so we don't run into it and it's anchored and doesn't fall out of the world, because that would be very bad. Then, we need to add in our proximity prompt. So, oh, I almost forgot. Don't forget to make the transparency of the green part fully transparent. Now, back to our proximity prompt. Our proximity prompt, uh, we're going to rename uh, Rager door prompt, all right? So, if we go to properties we need to change a few things about this so action text we're just going to make this open slash close so it's telling us what we can do and we've got to name the object that we're interacting with in this case it's just a door so we will just put door now i've just put all caps because it looks slightly better all right so let's change a few more things about our proximity prompt i'm going to make the max activation distance to eight 
and I'm going to make the hold duration about 0.4 of a second and obviously enabled is true. As you can see, if we walk up to our door, the proximity prompt has appeared with the uh, interact text of open and closed and the name of what we are interacting with. Now obviously if I hold that down, it doesn't do anything at the moment, but that's where our coding skills come in. So let me show you how to code the doors right now. So for our code, all we need is a script inserted into our main door. Let's just rename this script to main door manager all right and we need to define a few variables <laughs> all right this is a longer script so just bear with me here so first we need to define the tween service so obviously the tween service is what helps us move parts around all right so let's do let's just get local tween service all right all right so here is just our tween service variable. Uh, obviously we're going to be needing a few more, few more variables, but that will be our script, all right? So now we need to get to the main door, all right? So let's do local main door is equal to script.parent. And we're going to get the door frame. So we're just going to do local door frame is equal to main door, colon wait for child, door frame. All right, so now we have our uh, main parent of all of our operations, and we also have, and we also have our door frame. All right, so we can get our uh, destination positions. So now we need to do, we need to get these two parts here, the two uh, positions that we can tween to. So let's just do all local. Uh, door one uh, position uh, part is equal to door frame colon wait child and this is we're working with number one so let's get uh, let's get door piece number one and obviously it's the exact same for getting number two so let's just copy and paste this line of code right here all right, and change the door piece one to two. And over here where it says door one, change that to two because we can't have two variables named exactly the same on a local client. All right, so back up here under our door, we also need to get the uh, prompt, all right? So we can, get, uh, we can detect when the proximity prompt is triggered, all right? So when someone, uh, when someone wants to open the door. So let's do a uh, local trigger door prompt is equal to actually main door colon wait for child and let's just get keyhole and we'll do dot trigger door prompt all right so it's finding our trigger door prompt make sure you have that selected and now drop a few lines back here under our door position variables. All right, so the last few variables we need to get are the actual door pieces themselves, okay? So these two door pieces that we're actually moving to close the door. So let's do local door piece uh, one is equal to equals main door colon wait for child and let's just get door piece one and then copy and paste this line of code right here and paste change it to two and two so now we have all of our variables defined and we can now finally start tweening our doors for when they uh, need to be opened all right make sure we've dropped a few lines down here let's define our main open the door function all right so this function is going to manage tweening the doors detecting when they're finished and enabling our uh, proximity prompt okay so let's do function uh, open door 
and we're not going to accept any parameters at the moment uh, you can if you'd like if you know how to do that and you'd like to make changes of your own then be my guest of course but for now we're just going to have a nameless function that some people call them names First, we obviously need to disable the door prompt because when someone opens the door we don't want them to be able to continue prompting and causing errors for the door so once the door is prompted, we're going to do door uh, trigger prompt dot, ena oops, dot enabled equals false. All right, so the actual so the actual prompt is actually going to disappear from the player's screen, so they can't activate it until the prompt. Uh, the function is finished. Alright, so now we need to open some new tween information. So we can, we need to open two tweens, obviously, for door 1 and 2 to tween each one to their corresponding C frame. So let's do uh, local, we're just making this local to the function. Uh, let's do local tween door 1 equals service colon create and we're going to start with object that we want to tween all right so in this case tween door one we want door piece one so let's do door uh, piece one all right and now we need to do uh, drop a line and a comma and let's go for tween uh, info dot new because we need our tween info obviously and let's get uh, five seconds to open all right now we need to supply an easing style I'm just going to use linear uh, enum dot easing style dot linear and I'm also just going to add an enum uh, because just so it's satisfied for uh, all the, of the values so enum dot uh, easing direction all right um dot and out all right now we need to add whether it repeats um and things like that so let's do uh we don't want it we only want it to repeat once so let's do zero uh comma we're going to do true so the true means that it's going to actually slide back and go back into its original position so the door will close and let's also make it wait about one second once it's open so it's just enough time for the player to get through now after this after this first uh, this first brace we need to drop another line as you can see uh, put a comma after the first bracket and drop down behind this uh, one down here so now we need to supply a C frame value uh, in a table so let's just define a table C frame um, is equal to and now we need this is where our positions come in handy so we need a uh, door one position part so we already have our variable door one position part and if I find it here dot C frame and that is our complete door C frame for a door one completely finished now obviously we have two doors so copy and paste this piece of code right here and follow me very carefully where it says tween door one change that to tween door two where it says door piece one make sure that it says door piece two and then down where it says door one position part we want door two position part okay and the last thing we last few things we need to do to clear up here is we need to play the tweens so let's do tween door one colon play let's do tween door uh, uh oh that's tween door two sorry tween door one we want to start with one and then move to two and let's do two colon play all right so 
obviously this will play and this will be uh, this will open the doors but the problem we will have is that we will not be able to open the doors again if we can't uh, open this <laughs> this correctly so instead of putting a wait and then re-enabling the door we can actually uh, check when the tween finishes so the last tween that plays is tween 2 so that's what we're going to go by so we're going to do tween 2 dot uh, dot uh, ended all right see I've completed this is actually checks when it completes so when it completes let's just connect function function does not need a name and let's just do uh, let's just do could take this line copy and paste that down here and make that true all right and the very last thing we need to do for our script is we need to actually call this function when the trigger prompt is called all right so all we have to do is trigger prompt dot triggered colon connect and we want the open door function and that should be our complete complete door tweening script so close off your script and click play now as you can see if we walk up to the door there is our prompt and if we prompt the door as you can see the doors are sliding open after our set amount of time and they are closing again after about one second obviously you can customize this in your script where I said and also the prompt has actually reappeared see as I trigger the door it disappears it is completely gone and then as soon as the door returns I see as soon as it finishes see as the prompt reappears let's see if we can get 10 likes on this video but other than that thank you guys so very much for watching uh, rate comment and subscribe let me know how your uh, door went if you have any problems please let me know I will do my best to help you but other than that thank you guys so very much for watching see you next time